A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came down to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. A prophet to the nations, I appointed you. But do you gird your loins, stand up and tell them all that I command you? Be not crushed on their account, as though I would leave you crushed before them. For it is I this day who have made you a fortified city, a pillar of iron, a wall of brass against the whole land, against Judah's kings and princes, against its priests and people. They will fight against you, but not prevail over you. For I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts, but I shall show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in human and angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It is not jealous. It is not pompous. It is not inflated. It is not rude. It does not seek its own interests. It is not quick-tempered. It does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. If there are prophecies, they will be brought to nothing. If tongues, they will cease. If knowledge, it will be brought to nothing. For we know partially and we prophesy partially. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I used to talk as a child, think as a child, reason as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. At present, we see indistinctly as in a mirror, but then face to face. At present, I know partially then I shall know fully as I am fully known. So faith, hope, love remain, these three. But the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. 
Jesus began speaking in the synagogue, saying, Today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke highly of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They also asked, Isn't this the son of Joseph? He said to them, Surely you will quote me this proverb, Physician, cure yourself, and say, Do hear in your native place the things that we heard were done in Capernaum. And he said, Amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years, and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Zarephath in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha, the prophet. Yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman, the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were all filled with fury. They rose up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built to hurl him down headlong. But Jesus passed through the midst of them and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening to all of you. And welcome to our celebration of the fourth Sunday in Ordinary Time. Before we begin my homily, I would like to bring you a few things to consider for this coming week. The first one is that Friday will be the first Friday of the month, and we will have an uh, exposition of the Blessed Sacrament from 8.30 until noon, and you are all invited to participate of this beautiful celebration. The Feast of the Presentation of the Lord of the Candle Mass will be on Wednesday, the 2nd of February, with the Blessing of Candles. Many of you have that devotion to bless candles. We are going to do that at the Mass, and you can bring as many candles as you want for blessing. I hope no more than 300, <laughs> at least whatever you are going to use for the rest of the year is up to you. And also on, on Thursdays, will be the, this coming Thursday will be the Feast of St. Blaise, and we are going to have the blessing of the throats on that day. And because of the pandemic, uh, next Saturday and Sunday, we will do a special blessing to all of you without touching your throats. Is that okay? Hopefully you would not be afraid of us. Deacon is just doing fine. Yeah? Let us welcome Deacon after his surgery on Thursday. He is doing excellent. So let us give thanks to God for your presence here with us. Let us give him a warm welcome of the surgery. Yeah? He told me I didn't want to stay home, you know, taking care of the doggies and all that. So, so he's here with us today. But he's getting better. Hopefully he will be in full recovery this week. What we see today in the gospel is the prophetic challenge. And for all of us, that's something that we need to pray for. Because this gospel today is a continuation from last account of last Sunday. Jesus, indeed, inaugural way of presenting himself as the one anointed by the Holy Spirit. And he is inaugurating his ministry in his own hometown of Nazareth. He is someone inspired by the Holy Spirit to proclaim the good news of salvation. And we see how the people of his own town are so happy about it. You know, first they were very positive. The reaction was really good. But later on, the response of Jesus to the people of his own town are really difficult. 
He is not really Joseph's sons. He is not part of our own families and our own households. And we see how he is able to respond to them with an important proverb in which reinforces his claim to a prophetic vocation. No prophet is ever accepted in his own city. This incident prefigures the whole of Jesus' public life. His ministry is going to be a ministry of love and forgiveness, and he is not going to be dissuaded or asked to go away because he is indeed the anointed one. We see also through the prophets of the Old Testament, and Jesus has the fulfillment of the prophets and of the New Testament, we see how Jeremiah is confronted with so many things. The Lord is saying to him, I am with you always. He has chosen this prophet from the mother's womb and consecrated him at birth. The mission of the prophet is to confront kings and priests and to condemn them for their this regard of the covenant of God and his demands. God is always with the prophets. The saving will of God is always a priority. At the time of the prophets, it is also at the time of Jesus, and it is also today. Rejection through the preaching of the gospel and the good news of Jesus it is always found with rejection. What is the better way for us to proclaim the good news and to see how St. Paul, in his second reading today, is calling us to participate in the love of God given to all of us, that love of God that is the greatest gift of all. The love that we profess is given to all of us and to the people around us. Not so much a definition has agape or eros or any other explanation, but the manifestation of what we really feel and do. Acting in love, we begin at home with our own family members. We express that love with those who are near to all of us. And we translate this love that Jesus is giving to us as charity. Charity, the mission of the universal love. The gift of love, the greatest of all, of all the gifts, is poured out into our own hearts by the Holy Spirit and by the Spirit of Christ himself, of the risen Christ. Jesus' own rejection is basically the transformation into all of acts of kindness by Jesus. He is not doing everything because he wants to do, but because he was asked by God to follow everything, to go until the moment of death. So he is returning the rejection with kindness, with love, with forgiveness. He will continue to preach and to evangelize without ceasing, always ready to proclaim the good news to everyone. Therefore, the invitation to all of us today is to continue the same mission of Jesus with love and sincerity of heart. Love can do all things in Christ and his merciful love. Stand up for Christ and his ministry. Stand up to proclaim and to defend the love of Jesus in our own lives. Do not be afraid if others reject you, but be ready to proclaim the good news of the word of God. Only give love.